Hi there, okay, so section two of gene expression is about transcription and splicing. Very important processes that we're about to cover. Quite a lot of similar de detail to DNA replication, but it's important you understand they are different processes. Okay, so protein synthesis is essentially gene expression. That's what it is. Chromosomes are stuck in the nucleus, but ribosomes are in the cytoplasm. Chromosomes are where the code for building protein lives, and ribosomes are where the protein is built. So we have a bit of a problem uh, trying to get the DNA to the right place. So a copy has to be taken from the nucleus to the ribosome, and that's what transcription is. Okay, so we're going to go through the steps of transcription first. So transcription basically is the stage of making that copy of DNA. It comes from transcribing, so transcribing is taking a copy of it. So we are taking a copy of the DNA from that specific gene, and then it's going to travel and go to the ribosome where it can be properly used to make the protein. So um, first thing that happens is obviously our DNA will unwind at the specific gene, remembering that it's not the whole DNA that unwinds, it's just at that gene. So at either end of it, there's still a double helix there. It's just that specific gene that is open. So that is where the mRNA is actually going to come in and start this process. So a section of DNA known as a promoter sequence is basically the starter signal. So this is this little promoter sequence is where mRNA uh, will start the process of protein synthesis. The next thing that will happen is that the complementary mRNA bases will line up opposite the DNA bases, forming that kind of single strand structure that we know as mRNA. So remember, complementary adenine is going to match now with uracil and your guanine is going to match with your cytosine and vice versa. Remembering again that uracil base is really, really important. So mRNA bases are going to come in, they're going to start to build that single-stranded mRNA molecule, um, and the RNA polymerase forms the ribose sugar phosphate bonds between these nucleotides. So as these nucleotides come in, they get joined together by RNA polymerase. So remember when we talked about DNA, we were talking about DNA polymerase. We are now talking about RNA, so it is RNA polymerase. If you just say polymerase, you're not getting any marks. You have to be specific, and this is something that quite a few of you made a mistake with in your homework. So make sure you're specifying, is it DNA, and is it DNA polymerase, or is it RNA with RNA polymerase? So it's that polymerase that is joining all of these nucleotides together. Once the strand has been fully transcribed, so once that whole gene has been copied, and made up of our mRNA and those bases have been joined together by RNA polymerase, uh, the mRNA strand is then complete. It's going to then detach from the DNA strand where it's going to go and travel towards the ribosome. But what is important before this is we talk about the fact that this is called the primary mRNA transcript. So this isn't the final bit of mRNA that's actually going to go to the ribosome. It's ready, it's completed, it's copied the gene but it's not quite ready for the ribosome yet. So this is the primary, so like the first mRNA transcript. Okay, now, as we said before, primary, like primary school, as in first, as in unfinished, okay? So before the mRNA leaves the nucleus, so important, we are still inside the nucleus for this process. The mRNA needs to be cut down, okay? And this happens during a process called splicing that is still happening inside the nucleus. We are not in the cytoplasm, we're still in the nucleus and splicing needs to occur to, in order to form it into a mature mRNA transcript, which is a finished one that is definitely now ready to make the protein. Okay, so th there's a bit of a weird thing about DNA, is that inside DNA it contains non-coding areas, basically bits that weren't needed in order to build a protein, random bits of A's and G's and C's and T's or adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine that were not really needed for, for, for coding any kind of protein. Um, now these non-coding areas are useless and they have to be cut out of the mRNA because the mRNA copied everything. Imagine it, I don't know, like uh, you're a spy and you're trying to copy some secret information and down in the corner uh, this, the people have gone and doodled a picture of their lover. You know, you don't need that. That's not the important bit. So you want to cut that out and get rid of it. You don't want to pass that on to your bosses or you're going to look like an idiot. Uh, it's kind of similar thing that happens during mRNA synthesis. No pictures of lovers or anything like this, but you need to cut out the useless information. Now, important terms. 
the non-coding areas, these useless bits of information, are called introns. Okay? The coding areas, the useful stuff on the mRNA strand, is called exons. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to get rid of the introns and we want to chain all the exons together and fling them off to the ribosome. OK, so here's a diagram showing splicing happening. Now, at the top, you can see you've got your primary mRNA transcript that is made up of both introns and exons. Then splicing happens, the giant red arrow. And what we end up with is a mature mRNA transcript that is only exons joined together and the introns are all at the side uh, being left out. Now, important, try or try and use this kind of terminology to remember, but the introns stay inside the nucleus. They are non-coding, so they are not going to the ribosome because they are useless. OK, now notice as well, there is a difference between the primary and the secondary, sorry, the mature transcript in terms of length. The mature transcript is shorter. This is because it has had stuff cut out of it. That's an exam question that crops up every now and then. It says give a difference between the primary and the mature transcript. So you say one is shorter than the other because it's had stuff cut out of it. So introns stay in the nucleus, exons are going to exit the nucleus and go and do useful things. OK, so the mature transcript, which is now finished, it's only made up of coding exons. Uh, it leaves the nucleus and goes to the ribosome. OK, and that's where the next stage of the process is going to happen called translation. So to summarize, uh, your promoter sequence is an area on the start of the gene where the DNA, where the protein synthesis is actually going to start. Yeah, your RNA polymerase is the thing that adds a complementary RNA nucleotide to that mRNA strand, so actually forms the strand from the nucleotides. Okay, the primary mRNA transcript is made up of introns and exons. The introns are the non-coding areas of mRNA. These and remain in the nucleus. Mm -hmm. And the exons are the coding areas of mRNA. And the mature mRNA transcript is a strand of mRNA made only of exons. Okay, so part three translation is in the third video.